Von Bell wasn't there because of injury. Uh, he's a safety that the Carolina Panthers uh, signed over the offseason. Chandler Zavala, fourth-round pick from NC State. Yes. He wasn't there today, but it's also because of injury, mm-hmm. and they allowed those two players to miss. Um, another player who's injured, J.C. Horn, the yes. cornerback out of South Carolina. Um uh, He's been injured. However, he was there. Frank Reich, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, gave an update on his injury earlier today. Yeah, he's making great progress. We miss him out here, um, but he's making great progress. He'll, he should be ready to go for training camp. So short and sweet. Uh, expect him to be back. They don't seem to be uh, really uh, worried about what's going on with J.C. Horn right now, which is cool. Here's one thing, and we've talked a lot about this before, Dennis, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Carolina Panthers wide receiver group. You say that there is no number one there. I don't believe there is. I agree, but with the caveat that we don't know that one of the players on the team could potentially grow into being a number one. Okay. Um, And a lot of that is because, one, Jonathan Mingo, we don't know because he just got drafted. Maybe he is a number one. True wild card. True wild card. True wild card. Uh, Terrace Marshall Jr., last couple years under Matt Rule, for some reason Matt Rule had something against him. Mm-hmm. We don't know what it is. Didn't like really playing the guy. But then when he was being played, especially when Steve Wilkes took over as the interim head coach, well, Terrace Marshall Jr. started to ball out. Terrace Marshall Jr. was one of the reasons when DJ Moore is getting double covered, double double covered, was able to keep the Panthers' uh, chains moving, making plays for them. Mm-hmm. Maybe with an actual real coaching staff, he could end up growing into a pretty good, maybe potentially number one player, number one wide receiver. And then even with the tight ends, Tommy Trimble just said last week, this is the first time in his two-year career, first two years with Matt Rule, that he's been coached up as far as the receiving part of the game is being concerned. So Tommy Trimble, as a tight end, could see a huge step this year. It's just amazing to see Frank Reich, I uh, gave an update on the wide receiver group and what's going on with them as it's currently constructed. I like the room. Thielen's the leader. He's doing a great job. It's good to see DJ, you know, back out there. Chenault is a really a unique piece. You know, Terrace Marshall's, you know, look good. Mingo's, you know, I think Mingo's got a chance. You know, he's a rookie, so he's got, you know, ways to go. It's hard for rookie receivers to develop, but he's got the right mentality and attitude. And then really across the board, um, you know, we like to spread the ball around. Thielen, yeah, he's the leader. Chark is our, you know, big play guy. But um, I think the ball will get spread around. I think, you know, I think that's the way our offense has always been built. Okay. I understand that, like, receiver by committee mindset. I get you want to definitely want to get everyone involved. But if I'm a defensive coordinator and I get ready to play the Carolina Panthers, as of right now going in, who scares you? Who scares you? Who, who, like when you look at other teams, when like for example, like the Buffalo Bills or somebody like that, we or even the the Minnesota Vikings. When you look at some of those top guys, like okay, I know I have to adjust my coverage to that guy. I got to know where that guy is on the field. Whether it's Stephon Diggs in Buffalo, whether it was even back in the day with Antonio Brown in Pittsburgh, Tyreek Hill, those guys. Like I have to adjust how I cover and play defense because of that guy. I have to work around and factor in everything for that guy. Kansas City now, even without Tyreek Hill. It's Travis Kelsey in the middle, right? Like, I have to work on things around that guy. There's no one on that team right now for the Carolina Panthers that I sit there and go defensively and go, that guy, I have to make sure every single play, every single down, I know where that guy's lined up, and I have to adjust everything I do based on that guy. And when you say that, you're, you're meaning wide receivers. Wide receivers. Here's what I think. Uh, here's how to answer your question. Who scares you? Well, last three years when I when we played the Carolina Panthers, we didn't. there wasn't a real coach, so I could just out-coach them even though they had Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. They didn't have a quarterback that scared me. The line didn't really hold a well, lot that's of water. The thing, well, the thing for them, that's the thing. The, the offensive line stunk. So you don't have to worry about that. You just but have, all you do is blitz them. Right now, a legit coach and coaching staff. Okay. but Bryce, I also Bryce Young, somebody un- who is the best quarterback in the best football conference in college. Still unproven as a rookie. Unproven, Still unproven, but we saw what he did in college, and let's take it back to high school, playing, which is basically like a college team in modern day. Yeah, high school, in, in, high school, <laughs> in, in high school. But pro. you talk about you talk about highest of the highest level. 
That's the highest of the highest level okay. when it comes to high school. But this is pro. But I, I I know that. But I'm saying this guy has succeeded at every level, and now they have this guy with a legit line in front of him, mm-hmm. and maybe don't have that one wide receiver, but you have Hayden Hurst, you have maybe mm-hmm. Tommy Tremble, you have. Miles Sanders, but again, you have Adam Thielen, who has burned a lot of teams in the past. You have DJ Chark. You have Lis- 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 I know, you're, you're, Okay, you're you reading Terrence off Marshall. a roster. You're reading off a roster, but again, out and of those names, who scares me? Again, it's not about who. It's about the difference in the team. Because beforehand, there wasn't a good, there wasn't a good offense at Carolina. There was nothing there that's that's. There's nothing in general that scares you. And now you have all the pieces that are there. So I would be simply afraid of. That fact that I don't know right now. Beforehand, you knew that they're going to force feed Christian McCaffrey. That's true. You, you did. knew that that offensive line was not going to be good. Mm-hmm. You knew that that quarterback could probably get rattled over the last three years. Yeah. You knew that you could outcoach Matt Rule. That was the way to stop Christian McCaffrey. Right now, I don't know. Well, question is that's just- the part when you ask the question, "What's going to scare me if I'm another team?" That that's it. Right now, I don't know. The coaching staff is legit. The quarterback is legit. The line is legit. And they have a bunch of receivers. Okay, just because they have guys on the roster, we okay. get a bunch of receivers. Okay. A bunch of receivers. Again, Keep sleeping, they're, Dennis. They're, they're, it, Keep would not sleeping. Su- it would not surprise me early on in the season if the Carolina Panthers have offensive success. But again, because we don't know what, my, what Frank Reich's offense is going to look like with this group, with this quarterback. Because again, it's the first first year head coach, a whole, whole bunch of new pieces. And they could come out so, hot and well, win five in well, a row. That's the thing. They could come out hot, but when teams start to figure out what they're doing, when, they, when teams start to figure out what you're doing, do they have those playmakers that can sit there and beat? Even though you know, like, hey, I'm running the ball right here, I'm still going to get seven yards. Or I'm, you know I'm throwing to this guy, that dude's still catching it. Like, everyone knew that that Patrick Mahomes was throwing the ball to Travis Kelsey. Guess what he still kept doing? Turning out catch after catch after catch after catch. Everyone knew the ball's going to him. You know why? Because that dude's simply just better. I say right now, Carolina Panthers don't have that dude. It's like, yeah, that guy's just better than you. But that's the thing, though, that I'm going back to, Dennis. You don't know. Because there are guys that are in Matt Rule's doghouse, like Terrace Marshall Jr., like guys like Tommy Trimble, who wasn't mm-hmm. being coached on how to be a great NFL tight end catcher, just a great NFL tight end blocker, that there are some people who really could end up through this system, through this coaching staff, and through a great quarterback, at least on a college level, right? Again, unproven, again, unproven, unproven in, in the, the college, NFL. Unproven at the NFL. But, but great on a college level, you, you could see – Oh my God, Adam Thielen? He's having a career resurgence. He's he's the comeback player of the year. You could see that. It could possibly happen. And to discount that, I think is is, is a little foolhardy. I'm not discounting I'm not discounting it. Again, it wouldn't shock me if the offense pops off early in the season until teams start figuring out. But as the season progresses, when teams start to figure out Bryce Young, when teams start to realize like, oh, that guy actually doesn't that guy ain't gonna beat me. I'm 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 skeptical what the offense is going to look like midpoint and on midpoint in the season and beyond. It would not surprise me if they come out hot out of the gate, but when teams start to figure you out, this is what happens sometimes with rookies. When they, for example, we saw last year with the Miami Dolphins, they came out hot, right? But teams started to figure them out. There, and teams started to figure them out. And what happened to their offense? They fizzled. Now I know Tua got hurt, but that's my that's my concern about this team. And that and that team has Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. There's a lot to there was a lot to that was already figured out about Matt Rule and the way he ran his team. But at least under Matt Rule, bad coaching and all, Panthers were at least good for for five games. So that meant that those guys on the team were good enough to at least do that by themselves. Now add in a legit coaching staff. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you figured out. A good coaching staff can add another five to that. And now you've got a ten win team. Well, I think they're definitely a ten. I, I think they're a 10-win team just for the simple fact that they give a garbage division that they're in. They should win five games in that division alone. Five in that division alone.